All right, let's just get this party started. Welcome, welcome everybody to my first stream in like forever. I'm just streaming this one here. I'm going to be going on vacation. Got a really busy month of August, so not going to be able to get much poker action. In. So it's been a while since I've streamed, and I do plan on going back to streaming in um, in September. But until then, just wanted to stream this just because for the fun of it. Hopefully we can take something down here. And plus his deep stack as well. 
which I'm pretty excited about because I love some deep stack poker. So I appreciate everybody coming and hanging out with me. Let me check my mic levels. Everything looks good. And I was going to be checking this here. And we get top pair, uh, completely out of position. Let's try and take it down right now. Uh, we were unsuccessful in that. Uh, so I was going to check here. And I don't think we'll see a situation that will call. Obviously, it could be floating with aces, things like that when it comes out here. So, very early in the tournament. Not going to sit here and fight for this. Tried to take it down. Couldn't. He could have had an eight with a better kicker. No reason to screw around. Uh, so we got this, and I think I might play the medium as well. The medium starts at 4.15, so I think I might play that one as well, since I'm not going to be able to play any more tournaments this month until, I don't know, the end of August, possibly. Uh, King 4, you can fold this up. Let's look at my mic volume. I don't know if my mic volume is too loud. It's the first time I've opened up OBS in quite a while. So I don't want the mic to be too loud. If you find the mic is loud, let me know. If the mic is too loud. Or if it's too soft. It looks like the mic is going pretty loud right now. Um, so I also want to make sure that I'm shark scoping people. Uh, five six here in the cutoff. Um, we'll overlimp here. We'll just fall to this. Oh my god. United we zag. <laughs> Thanks for the sub. I mean, you know, I'm not going to really be streaming much this month, but I appreciate it. That's why I made my my um, my uh, my goals like pretty much nothing. Because <laughs> I'm definitely going to start streaming again next month, but this month I have no time to play. But I appreciate you subbing to me for five months. You probably are my longest sub ever. You know, I was like, hope you're doing well. Sorry it didn't work out for you in Vegas, but you know, I'm sure you did an amazing job over there. Uh, oh, so I was shark scoping some peeps. What is this press? Helen. It's funny, it seems like whenever I'm st I start shark scoping people and I get the whole table shark scope, my table gets moved. So hopefully that doesn't happen today. I'm gonna fall to B84. I'm 
curious to see what kind of crowd we get here um, in this tournament on a uh, Saturday afternoon and during the summer. I was actually surprised this was the tournament. I was pretty happy about it because I see tonight's an anti up. And I could play tonight, but I'm not going to be playing an anti up. I don't want to play anti up. But if we have a table of just not so good players, that would be a wonderful thing. Now, what I do also plan to do, because I'm not playing, even still, I'm not playing, like last month I only got 22 tournaments in. But what I do plan to do with this stream is, uh, there's going to be some days I'm playing cash, some days I'm playing sit and goes, some days I am playing tournaments, and I'm just going to stream like whatever I'm playing. It's my eventual plan. And I'm not playing every day and just whenever I'm playing so forth and so on, depending on what my schedule looks like, and depending on what I get involved in, because I am doing, I got more involved in the theater now too, so I'm doing a, if you follow me on Twitter, you know, I'm, uh, I actually got a show uh, later this month after my vacation, doing a, a musical, at, uh, it's a show called Musical, the musical, it's um, a parody on current events and commercials and, and things like that, uh, just for example, there's like a scene, there's, there's a scene where I play uh, Bernie Sanders. It's pretty damn funny. Um, so it's a lot of fun. And I'm going to be doing something else at the end of the month. But then September, my schedule should be clear that I can play lots of poker in September. Um, tournaments, cash games, sit and goes, everything. You know, I just want to be playing it all because I love it all. Poker is such an amazing game. And I'm still playing Daily Fantasy 2 even though I have only been losing money all season. Sorry, right, I'm still having fun with it. <laughs> That's remained consistent. Let's hope everybody else is doing awesome. Having some good times. Uh, we got a new player here at the table. Beru. So far, this looks like a pretty good table early on. Fold up A2, of course. I appreciate that, Zag. Zag is always here and always very supportive, and it's very much appreciated. For anybody who is here and has never checked out United with Zag's stream, please do me a favor, give him a follow. When he streams, he is an incredible streamer, a lot of fun. So please give United We Zag a follow. Yeah, I mean that's day three is is amazing. That is pretty incredible. That is amazing, Zag. And like honestly, I, I knew you would I, I knew you would do well on it. You know, there's just so many people, it's so hard to cash that thing. So, I mean, yeah, making it to day three was definitely an accomplishment. Getting the bag up those chips. You know, a lot of people didn't get the bag up chips. You got the bag up chips, and that's, that's pretty awesome. Got Lion King over here. So we got, you know, on this table right now, we have, like, two winning players. So, in case you're curious what the tags mean, um, one of these days I'll actually make a command for tags. Uh, but my tags are different for cash games and and tournaments too. So we're gonna be streaming different types of games. Maybe a, maybe a tag uh, a tag tag a tag tag would that be it? A tag tag would be uh, kind of useless. But um, yellow is a losing player. Green is a winning, I mean, uh, blue is a winning player. 
and red is just not enough of a sample size to really make a determination. And even still, like when I say winning player and losing player, it just means if they're positive or negative. I mean, they, a player could have won one tournament and have lost every other one, and then they're they're actually a losing player. But they're positive in terms of um, profit and loss, so that'll put them as a as a winning player. So we'll see if we can get this trophy today. It'll be nice. In fact, what's pretty awesome is the vacation that I'm going on next week is a vacation that was paid courtesy of my Grizzly win. So we're going to be going to uh, Lake Harmony over in um, Pennsylvania for a week, and I cannot wait. We have we, we got an Airbnb right there on the lake. This is going to be so relaxing just to get away from everything. You know, I feel like I'm just driving my kids around everywhere every single day. It's been just like I'm pretty much an Uber at this point, um, like dad Uber, you know, dad taxi, as I like to call it, unpaid. And, you know, myself and my wife, and it's like all we're doing is just driving these kids everywhere. So it's going to be nice to have a week off to not have to drive kids anywhere. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Uh, pocket three is under the gun. We're going to fold this up here. Blinds are up now. So um, we have an M of 166 or 258 big blinds right now. I'll, um, I'll mention both. So it's actually funny. I've been really doing really bad on global, but I've been doing a lot better on Battle Online. So when I have been playing tournaments, I've been playing a lot more tournaments on Battle Online, just because Battle Online um, it uh, fits my uh, playstyle better than global. But at least we got a deep stack tournament here, so it's not as rushed as a global tournament usually is. But I will say that you know I have. I have a lot more money right now on Bet Online because I've been having a lot more success on Bet Online than Global, just because of um, the play style is just more suits my my style. Also, uh, Bet Online just has more tournaments that I'm interested in. But we love it when Global does these series because they're always amazing. Are right, we getting nine eight suited here in the big blind? And we get um, a tad bit over a 3x open here. Uh, we are going to defend unless a 3-bet comes in. Yeah, why not? Jump in it. It's got 60 minutes late, Reg. With a 10k uh, stack to start, which is really nice. You don't see that at um, at these uh, at, at these levels. We're going to fold up here to this 3-bet. Join me, Zag. Maybe we'll get the same table. That'd be pretty awesome. 60 minute late reg, which is not bad, actually. You know, like when you can see what the late reg is like on Bet Online. We get the all in here from Brew, who's the one who three bet. I didn't catch what Brew's starting stack was here, but it must not have been a lot for Brew to be all in. We'll get to see also Brew 3 bet with. Now, Brew might be done. We don't know. Maybe Brew has Ace Queen. All right, Brew 3 bet with 6-5 uh, uh, offsuit. And that's why Brew is now done. Because Brew is doing things like that. 5-3 uh, offsuit, we're going to fold. we got a new player at the table here. Uh, Endless Waltz. Uh, endless 
whilst we get a, a red tag. Don't know enough about him. Oh, we got over here also uh, slop, Sloppy Bobkin. I missed. And uh, Sloppy Bobkin will get the yellow tag. I think it's funny. I, li I like the hi whole idea of a goat trophy. <laughs> Grateful time. Uh, Ace three offsuit. Uh, we'll fall to the open limp. Not gonna be looking to hit play a hand like Ace three offsuit multi way. Not going to be isolating with Ace-3 offsuit, so we fold it. Let's see what Sloppy Bobkins decides to do here. Calls it as well. And we get a huge isolation there from uh, Endless Waltz. And, uh, yep. Endless Waltz will take those chips. I don't really think those chips are too valuable at this point, especially with no antis at, the, uh, at this uh, juncture. So either Endless Waltz is insane, or you have, like, pocket aces. We'll follow up the A3 offsuit. Wait to see what uh, Endless Waltz does here. All right, so Endless Waltz with a 2x open, which I think is kind of light at this stage. I like to at least open it up 3x. But Endless Waltz opens it up 2x and uh, goes multi-way. And this could be a good flop here for Endless Waltz. Um, unless he's opening based off of like his card value, which you know a lot of weaker players will do. Uh, now it checks around here, a flush completes uh, it doesn't look like anybody's got a flush unless somebody is trying to slow play, which will happen. Um, and now the board pairs as well, but I don't expect anybody to have any kind of full houses. Uh, somebody having a six is possible. We see Endless Waltz call. And uh, Endless Waltz, we don't know what he had, but uh, that seven decided to bet there, which I think was an interesting bet by Helen. Uh, can we get the open limp here? We're not going to be playing a lot of pots early on, I think, like versus limps without really strong hands. Um, yeah, as you can see, the table is very, very active right now, and I think we probably have, since we have a lot of weaker players at the table, um, we're going to want to play a little more straightforward. Not going to be doing a lot of bluffing here. And the table so far is very aggressive. Here you get a, um, a three bet there from, uh, canned, um, canned salmon. And now Sloppy, who originally uh, limped, I believe, or he opened, I don't remember. Uh, but here, we're going to get an all-in now. And we got uh, Queens versus Ace-King, pretty standard. And uh, King should take it, and King does take it. So Ace-King takes it, and Ken Salazar is out of the tournament. Jack-3 offsuit, we're going to fold that up. Uh, so we got now Dark Draw at the table. And Dark Draw is also going to get a yellow tag. So we got a lot of yellow tags here, which we are definitely happy about. We're not upset about having a bunch of yellow tags here. And uh, so what happened here? We got an open from Endless Waltz. Now you got a 3-bet by Helen. You got a 4-bet by Endless Waltz. Lion King Cold calls the 4-bet. And Helen calls as well. So you go multi-way in a 4-bet pot. This stuff happens on Global. And we get a... Uh, middling board here, and Lion King now pots it. Let's see what Endless Walls does. Endless Walls does decide to call. Probably got some overs, I would think. 
probably not uh, something that Endless Walls wants to see with the Ten of Diamonds. And uh, we get the jam here by Lion King, and um, we'll see what Endless Waltz decides to do here. Endless Waltz does decide to call, and uh, Endless Waltz sucks out, um, but Lion King had 9-7, so I mean, I don't know what Lion King was doing, but all we do know is that Lion King is currently out of this tournament. Endless Waltz decided to call with a, um, with a flush draw, having one sole ace of diamonds, and he did hit on the river. But, I mean, obviously, that was pretty bad play by, uh, you know, the guy calling a 4-bet. Um, a cold call 4-bet with 9-7 offsuit was pretty bad and probably why he's no longer in this tournament. But we do know Endless Waltz here is definitely, I'm going to mark him as a little bit of a calling station. Um, considering that he would get involved in the 4-bet pot with Ace-Jack offsuit. offsuit. And call the jam on the river with ace high one diamond flush draw. Which means no reason to bluff a player like Endless Waltz because he's just never going to fold. If he's got even a draw, he's going to call. And those are the type of players that are going to suck out on you on the river. But again, I, you know, I was a suck out of course, but I mean, I was, again, you know, a player should not even have 9-7 offsuit in that spot. It was really bad pre-flop play there. I mean, that 9-7 offsuit shouldn't even have been involved in that pot. They, they should have folded pre-flop um, to the original open. They should not be calling 9-7 offsuit. But I think players, you know, in these deep stack tournaments, they feel like... They feel like they have, like, all these chips so they can just do some crazy things. But, I mean, I, I don't think that's the way to play. I think the way to play is to use your stack versus bad players um, playing better than them. Not by just playing, you know, with any two cards, like a 9-7 offsuit. But, I mean, that's just me. I could be wrong, I don't know. No, I'm not wrong. I'm just kidding, I'm definitely 100% not wrong. <clears throat> I right, we got another multi-way pot. Everybody's checking along here. Similar to another uh, another spot we saw where a six doubles up on the river. Here, nobody decided to play and get a split pot. Uh, split. Uh, here, we definitely are going to open. This is going to be our, I believe our first hand or one of our first hands of this tournament that we're going to play. We're going to open it up 3x. Ace 10 suited. And we get a call. And it's probably going to go multi-way. We'll see somebody 3-bets. The problem with somebody 3-betting is... Well, first of all, this is a tiny 3-bet, so we're never folding this here. I mean, it's, all this does is it just inflates the pot. It does re this, this betting doesn't really accomplish much of anything. But we'll still remember the fact that he did 3-bet here. But we're going to play this hand really straightforward, of course. And we do uh, get top pair. It's a shame that there are no hearts on this board. Um, but we are definitely going to bet here. But we don't need to bet big. We got six people here at this table. Um, I mean, we could just bet like 450, I think, is good. Like, we could bet really small here. We got so many people at this table. We get this jam that comes in now. And I think this just becomes an easy fold multi-way. Um, sets of fours, sets of threes are possible. Ace four, ace three, hands like that. Uh, no reason just to give away our entire stack because we have top pair here. So this is an easy fold. There's so many hands here. Two pairs and sets. Set of four, set of three. And this is a good player too. Deuce is five. He's a good player. So he's not jamming with nothing. He's going to play this pretty straightforward.
Uh, three six here. We're not going to be defending. <clears throat> and uh, let's see. So sloppy opened up here. Make money calls. Pretty dry board. Jack five three offsuit or rainbow. And we get the standard C bet there from sloppy. Uh, here we have 10-9 suited in a small blind. And we get a 4x open. Um, I am going to call just because we're deep here. We can call with 10-9 suited. Uh, to a four, even to a four X open is fine. Don't love it, of course, but uh, pretty good, pretty good spot for us here. We got the open ender, we got the flush draw. Um, I think it's um, a great spot for a check raise, actually, because this board is so good for us as well. We don't have to check raise now, but we definitely do want to bet, and we're gonna make it. Um, 360. And we'll take it down. This is a great board for us. Would have been nice to have an opportunity to check a raise there. And just gain some more chips, but took it down anyway. 10-8 uh, here will fall from the button. I just realized I didn't update my uh, title, so I'm, I just updated it now. I saw my title from like the last time I streamed. So I fixed that. Uh, nine four suit here will fold us up. Uh, we get the open limp there from Can. Uh, is it Can? Can na daddy? Can na daddy? Okay. <clears throat> and we get a couple of over limps here from Sloppy and Endless Waltz. <clears throat> See if Helen decides to just defend or to raise it. And Helen does decide to raise up to 360. So it's, that's about um, 5x uh, isolation, which is okay. Of course, Endless Waltz is going to call. Endless Waltz was, is playing just tons of hands. Interesting spot. You can see back here. You can just check call, check raise. Um... The two comes out. You know, I wouldn't hate to see a delayed C bet there. Although, again, Endless Waltz really is never folding because they're kind of a calling station. So, probably better not even just not even bother bluffing. And yeah, I mean, Endless Waltz uh, got aggressive uh, with bluffing there because. And interesting, Helen uh, calls twice with the Ace Queen, including, like, called with no hesitation with the Ace Queen on the river. So ace high on the river, I mean, Helen knows that Endless Waltz probably is just very aggressive and is willing to um, throw out a pro bet and then a follow-up, which is the correct play. And one of the hands he's definitely trying to get the fold is Helen's ace queen, but Helen um, snap called it, didn't even hesitate. Uh, here you have ace 10, eight, two tone. 
I missed a preflop action. <coughs> uh, three six here will fold us up. Uh, blinds are now up. Fifty one hundred. So we have an MS sixty two, ninety four big blinds to start off uh, this round of blinds. Endless Waltz, who plays pretty much every hand, is uh, going to open it up to X here. So we've seen that Endless Waltz, aside from that one time that they isolated um, a gajillion X. Right here, they're just opening it up to get the uh, three bet here from Deuces Five, which Deuce Five, which is you know a good player, excited to play against Endless Waltz, who's never going to fold. And we get King Two Way Two Tone. So I think Deuces Five is paying attention. He's going to definitely be betting here for value. And we get this uh, check, we get this raise, not check raise, but just a raise now. Now, Ellis Waltz is capable of doing anything, which is the interesting aspect of this here. Um, unpredictable, Deuces Five says, let's just do it. And Ellis Waltz calls, Ellis Waltz pair of fives, pair of aces. Great, uh, great play there by Deuces Five. Understands that Ellis Waltz is, Ellis Waltz is just not a very good player. And is definitely a spew. And he spewed. And Deuce 5 got paid for it. So congratulations, Deuce 5. Got a new player at the table now. We got uh, two new players at the table. We got uh, Ace. Uh, Aces all in 27. 2017. Who thus far, I mean, I don't know what to say about this player. Um, I'm going to do something interesting here because this is a losing player. They've won like one big tournament, definitely. Um, and uh, this player is kind of an unknown. We've got Queen 9. We'll fold this up here. <clears throat> so Dave Dog definitely just uh, late reg there. Uh, Helen open limps. And uh, Endless Waltz here. We'll see what Endless Waltz decides to do. We, all we know is Endless Waltz is probably going to do something reckless. I doubt Endless Waltz hits the check button. And he does not. Bumps it up to 800. Endless Waltz is a complete maniac. Uh, all right, so we get four two suited. We'll fold this up under the gun. <clears throat> and we get the open limp here from Helen again. I don't know why Helen's open limping because you know Endless Walt is gonna is gonna bump it up. Wow, Endless Walt actually over limps. That means Endless Walt must have a monster. <laughs> uh, so we got Ace Queen Seven here, two tone. Let's see if Endless Walt opens it up. He doesn't. He might be looking for that check raise. Checks around. Flush possibly complete for somebody here. And multi way of course is always gonna be better for multi way pots. He got. Potential straights out here, flushes, potential flush out here. See if Endless Walsh just takes a stab. He does, pot size bet. And we get the call. And again, uh, I mean, Helen just snap called with King High. I mean, wow. So Helen snap called, because Helen. It's either that Helen is saying that she knows Endless Waltz is pretty much going to bet with nothing, or Helen Helen is 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 crazy because she snap called Ace like no thought to it. Snap called Ace like and she just snap called King High in a multi way pot with a ton of draws out there, and she didn't care. She's like, you know what? I don't care.
So again, somebody you're just not going to want to bluff. But this also could be because she's paying attention and she realizes that Endless Waltz is a complete maniac. And we'll probably do it with anything. We'll bet with anything. So definitely interesting. So I missed the action on this one here, but we had a multi-way pot. <clears throat> uh, Dark Draw, who just bet previously. Thinking about like what bet size is going to do, and he just jams it, which just makes sense, considering what, you know... What you have there, and here you see uh, Ace all in called with the nut draw, and I mean, I don't know. I don't really think that's the right play. You know, you just, I know you have outs, but I, I, I don't think that's the right play. Uh, Jack 12 2 obviously we're gonna be folding this up here. And uh, we got move now. So we need to figure out who's at our new table. Uh, here we have uh, pocket twos. Uh, we're not going to play these from under the... Whoa, oh, it's not a lot of players in this pot here, is it? Alright, so we're going to open this up here. Going to make it 250. Because essentially we are in the hijack. Because a lot of these players just got moved to this table. Uh, we do have Helen. Who's moved as well and sloppy? He was here, so we go multi-way. Uh, interesting flop. We do want to see bet here. I know Helen could call us, but right now when Helen just op you know opens here, it becomes an easy fold. But in position, we definitely do want to see bet there. All right, let's uh, see who's at this new table. We do have some players who we've played with before. We have Healer Dad here. Uh, who, um, appears to be, I don't know who this guy is. Okay, uh, we're going to be opening up here 250. King-Queen suited. Um... We're just going to fold. We're just, uh. I think the proper play is to just fold here. Um, cut off versus under the gun. Three bet. Rather large. We have to play out of position. Uh, suited. I, I'm not sure what the right play is here. Uh, I don't think we could fold a hand as strong as King Queen suited though. King Queen off is easy fold. All right, we'll give it a call. Ah, uh, all right, not. All right, this is uh, we got the, we got the, yeah. I mean, got a pretty goddamn good draw. We got a gut shot. Got a straight flush draw. Uh, let's gonna check call this. Uh, if we don't hit, though, on the um, turn, then we're going to fold. Yeah. And now this is easy just to get out of the way here. Not going to be calling another bet. He checks it now. Um, I think we do want to throw out a, a bet here. Um... Get 2300 insta call ace king all right so just people just love calling with another guy who just insta calls with ace high like he did he didn't hesitate at all he didn't care insta call with ace high all right 
Fair enough. We didn't know anything about the player, so I don't know if he was a calling station or not, whatever the case may be, but I mean, he didn't hesitate. He calls with Ace King offseat. But I do think that um, that is the correct play. I don't know. My question on that one is, you know. All right, we have King 10 suited. Um, I have Emma 31, blind versus blind. King Tang Suit, we're just going to call. Uh, so this play has been the player has been limping. Don't love the ace being out there. Uh, but we are going to call here half off that. Jack comes out. We improve now to a gut shot. Uh, he decides to check here. Um, I think we can just easily just check back as well. And just easy check here again. And we have better king. So nice to be able to win that pot after getting snap called by the ace high on our bluff. I do feel like one thing at Global Poker that maybe I could kind of remove from my game is trying to pull off some bluffs later in <laughs> later in the streets because we there is so many calling stations here. Especially versus like an unknown player like that player, which I didn't have a chance to even look up yet. And yeah, seeing now he's a weaker player. Um, yeah, maybe we wouldn't even try and bluff him there. But I mean, obviously, You know, we could have a hand like Ace-10 there or something like that. That's, um, even just like a pocket pair, like, jacks that we would just call as 3-bet with. You know, and not 4-bet jacks and be value betting. Um, and then he calls with the Ace high. I mean, he snap called. Like, he didn't even, like, think about it. And now, that's multiple times we've seen that now, this tournament already. Of people snap calling with... High cards. Ah, uh, it's an easy fold here. Uh, let's see, we got the uh, three bet jam from Hard to Kill. It's a pretty big stack of jamming there. This is a jam versus a weak player. 10-6 uh, off, we're going to fold this up. Blinds are up. Blinds have been up, I guess. I missed it. So we have an M25, 37 big blinds. And we get the open here from Helen, who has been open limping. It's an isolation. Yeah, they're pretty bad. They are the the worst of the worst of playing right now. That's why it makes me kind of uh, maybe second guess the fact that I even tried to bluff these guys because I think bluffing is probably a waste of time. But again, if I had realized, if I had known that J3 was a recreational player, maybe I wouldn't have bluffed him. I just had, you know, with this getting the table change, I haven't a chance to actually look over the players yet. Um, we didn't really know. But that's okay. I mean, we're seeing a lot of guys just calling with high card hands so far. All right, nine eight here. We're gonna fold this up uh, from the hijack.
And we got Blind vs. Blind here. Let's see. Uh, two solid players. And big red opens. It was a limp, a uh, limp pot. Uh, Ace four here will fold us up. Get the open one from Helen. A uh, call from Big Red and Wash Capital. Dry board. 74 potential straight draw opportunities here and a multi-way pot you get the uh, half pot bet here from big red uh, here with king jack uh, from under the gun 2 we're going to be folding this one up and we get the 3x open from helen under the gun player who will open limp decides to open up here so I think when a player is doing this a weaker play like this um, it usually means some kind of strength in some way now what strength means to Helen we don't really know uh, but it does go check check sometimes you think maybe a hand like ace king you know watch out for Helen though she will snap call with ace high uh, now Helen decides to pot it when the seven comes out and flakes calls it here uh, let's see what Helen decides to do Helen bets a pot yet again, and uh, Helen had King Queen. So Helen opened up under the gun with King Queen. Normally she will open limp, but under the gun she opened up with King Queen. So hand that perceives to be strong. King Queen offsuit uh, under the gun. King Queen offsuit is a um, borderline open. Uh, we get the open limp here from Sloppy. We fold up our King Knight offsuit, of course. And we get the three bet there from uh, J3. Last time J3 three bet, he three bet us. He had ace king offsuit. And uh, we get the uh, four bet jam, but it's not real. I mean, he just. He's got no chips anyway at this point. Uh, sloppy. Let's see what Sloppy decides to do. Sloppy jams as well. And uh, see what J3 does here. Like I said, J3 last time it was ace king, so he folds it up here and. Uh, it was Sloppy had sixes, decided to jam his sixes and risk his tournament life with sixes. And, uh, well, he didn't have to, but J3 got it out of the way. King, uh, Queen Jack, we fold this up under the gun. So Sloppy, who was really deep, decided to jam those sixes. I don't really understand that play. So we guess he's capable of just jamming just pairs. Yeah, J3, I know what you're talking about. But you know that is a hard one to, uh, to pull. <clears throat> uh, six four here, offsuit, big blind. Just gonna take the option six four, and not gonna be doing anything here. Just gonna check it. <coughs> and we get the bet here from J three. Obviously, we're gonna be folding.
Obviously, J3 could be opening, you know, can be betting there. King is the most likely thing. Hey, what's going on there, Husker Brad? Thank you so much for good luck. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, I got this stream going on. Then, you know, next stream will probably be next month. But um, I had some time to, uh, and I've, I had the urge to throw up a stream here. I had some time to play. But after this, I don't have any time to play for <laughs> until the, towards the end of August. So it's been busy times for Poker Dad. But I hope you're doing well there, Husker. Uh, 10 6, obviously, when you fold this up. Uh, here we get 7 3 suited. Fold this one up. Uh, blind drop, by the way. So we have an M of 18 right now, 27 big blinds. Get the open lift from Helen. So we think, I think Helen, you know, when Helen's open limping, you know, maybe Helen's doing this with some kind of a low pocket pair. Maybe just, you know, obviously, when people open limp, they're open limping because they just want to see a cheap flop. And, you know, they could have a lot of different cards. And we get the uh, bet here from Healer. A little bit over half pot. Helen insta calls. I mean, Helen, we have, of course, we've seen already a couple times. Just call with high cards. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this is the type of board that Helen's going to do that with. Helen has an ace here. Helen's probably calling. Because Helen doesn't care. Let's see. Helen does call. And, yeah, Helen probably had an ace. I would not be shocked if Helen had an ace right there. Ace 4 will be folding up here. So we get the open limp here from J3. Yeah, I will say that even uh, deep stack here at Global, like, it doesn't play like a deep stack tournament at all. But that's, again, why I feel like I have more success over on Venom Line, just because... Um, it fits my style more than the craziness that you see over here on, on Global. Which is why overall I've had more success on... I've won more money on Global, but from a percentage standpoint, I've had more success on Bet Online. But I've won more on Global just more so because of the uh, Grizzly series more than anything. Just because I had to win there and a couple big scores in the Grizzly is the main reason why I've... But overall, I've actually played much better on Bet Online. Uh, 4-2, we're going to follow this up. And that's just because it fits my style better. I enjoy post-flop play. I feel like I'm good at post-flop play. We're at global. Even in a deep stack tournament here, there's just not a lot of post-flop play, which is kind of funny. And when there is, you get people calling with ace high and king high. So you can't bluff him. Uh, we get the open here from Helen. So again, Helen opens. She's got some kind of Broadway cards we know for sure. Um, under the gun. Ace here is beautiful for Helen. Helen could easily have an ace here. Um, throws out the under bet, which I think is fine. Got a paired board as well. You got a flush draw out there. See if one of these guys um, find a call button. They don't. Uh, here we have 8-6 offsuit. We'll fold this up. Uh, we're going to be going on break here after this <clears throat> after this um, round of blinds. I'll grab myself some coffee. Uh, we do get the open one from Helen. Watch Cap, he uh, calls it. And we got the paired board with the flush draw. Any ace out there? Get a min bet from J3 is enough to take down the pot. 
I hear a queen seven, which will fold us up. <clears throat> Helen folds this one up, so the hand is so bad, Helen doesn't even want to open it. J3 here in a small bind. Uh, opens up 3x versus a player with 11 big blinds, which is interesting. And um, Flakes calls it, which is fine. Helen is ass. Yeah, there's a lot of ass over here. We don't like Helen. Helen's pretty bad. And uh, King 4 offsuit decides to jam. I don't understand the point of that, but he's out of the tournament too. There's a lot of a lot of questionable play going on here. A lot of questionable play. Helen is I yeah I agree. Helen is ass. All right, we got a new player at the table. We got a uh, buck a worm. Which we don't really have information on. Uh, here we have Helen and Hard to Kill going at it. I mean, Helen plays almost every pot, right? Helen min bets here on a King 5 7 board. We get the raise here from Hard to Kill. Hard to Kill, one of the better players. As you can see here on Global. Hard to kill. Throws at the bet now. Helen, as we know, will call with high cards, so Helen probably had a queen. <laughs> Helen found a full bot. I don't know how I don't know how Helen did it. Uh, here where we are greeted with 7-2 offsuit from under the gun, easy fold. Well, while we're not really getting much, at least we can talk about everybody else's play, which is kind of fun actually. It helps me zone in here. Uh, queen Jack. Offsuit here in the big blind. We should be defending. Get Helen here in the button. Helen open limps, which is fine. And uh, we're just going to take the option. And uh, we are greeted with a open ender. Um, we're just going to check. And uh, now a flush complete, so with that being the case here, we just fall to a bet. And we have top pair. Again, there's really very little reason to, to call here. It's second pair and a multi-way pop. We just hope it goes check, 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 and we can somehow take down the 600 in chips. And uh, we do. Great. It's nice to hear that chime. Uh, open limp here. We're going to be folding up our ace five offsuit and small blind. Don't want to be playing this out of position. Unsuited ace. So limp pot here. We got uh, Jack King Queen out there. Two tone. Min bet from uh, Big Red. Now the board pairs with another queen. And we get um, just below half pot bet and Big Red will take it down. In the button here with uh, Jack-7 offsuit. Uh, if it folds to me, I'm actually going to open this here. Um, I think I can get folds from small blind and big blind here. It's going to take a miracle for it to fold to me. That means actually hell and a lot to fold and sloppy. Well, sometimes these things happen. And we'll open it up 450 if Sloppy does hit the fold button. He does not, so now we'll fold it up ourselves.
And uh, looks like we're on break. All right, I will be right back. I'm going to grab myself a cup of coffee. Enjoy your break as well. I guess, uh, let me wait till I can hit the button. Let me wait till you hit the button. I feel better when I can hit the button. Eh, it doesn't matter. Whatever. I'll be right back. On our break here, got two and a half minutes left. In the meantime, I will buy into some more games on DraftKings, which has not gone too well this year. But at least it's gotten me back into Daily Fantasy, which is good and bad all at the same time. what's going on I was late registration open uh, is over now
when we come back from break, uh, we're going to be greeted with an M of 8 and 19 big blinds. Uh, so the late reg closed now. I guess it is. Yeah, I think it is. Um, so top 99 get paid is 1.1k up top. Uh, so top 99 get paid. <laughs> a lot of them are asking a way to torment. So if that's just what makes it a little bit more difficult is finding that balance and not like definitely I, I, Zach, like do, do you agree that that bluffing versus these types of players is um, a waste of time? And pretty much, because because for the most part, the chips that I have lost in this tournament have been on me bluffing. I haven't lost to a better hand, except for you know obviously the bluffs. And the bluffs that were called versus me, my bluffs, um, my opponent beat me with a high card. So I think I would agree, unless of course it's versus a better player that I shouldn't be bluffing and I know this but sometimes it's just hard for me not to bluff and uh, yeah I do hope that we can double up versus Helen we're pretty much at almost uh, we're not push fold yet but right now average stack in this tournament is um, 13k so we're, we're well below average stack of course here with M of 8 19 big blinds Uh, King 3, we're going to fold this up. Now, uh, we get the open raise here from J3. <laughs> Good old Helen. Uh, here we have 5-3. I'll see. We'll fold this one up. Helen open raises. So, I mean, we know here usually just means if Helen has a decent hand, at least some broadways in there. For the most part, last time we got to see her card, she had king-queen offsuit. Uh, so you get a king-7-5 out there, uh, two-tone. Expect to see Helen c-bet here. With a king, of course. And uh, we get about a um, two thirds pop bet, so I bet. And she takes it down. Uh, here we get king queen, which we will definitely be opening up. But we will fold if sloppy should happen to open, but we will. Alright, now we're definitely going to open up here. We're going to open it up 2x, given our stack size. Uh, we will not call off a jam. With King Queen offsuit. Watch cap there in the button. Calls it. So it kind of sucks we have to play this out of position, but we can play it pretty straightforward here. <clears throat> and we go multi way, which makes it even more straightforward. Now we do have top pair, which is good news. Uh, we're going to bet half pot here. Not in love with the two nines, of course, but, you know, ace nine is the only hand I'd be concerned about that anybody would have a nine. Maybe a hand like nine eight or ten nine, I guess, could also be something we'd be concerned about. But either way, we took it down with our half pot bet. And we uh, get some chips, which is nice. Uh, Queen six two, we fold it up. And we get the jam here from Bucket Worm. Uh, 
Uh, 10902 here will fold us up from under the gun. <clears throat> right now, Buckleworm does have the effect of stack at the table, which is um, 19 big blinds and M of 8. Uh, we get the open here from hard to kill. Uh, 2.25x uh, 2, 2 open. <coughs> it goes multi way. Helen, of course, is going to call. And we'll see what Helen does leading out here if Helen decides to check. Helen does lead out with a pot sized bet. Hard to kill does call it. Hard to kill with the opener under the gun. So hard to kill could add some kind of a flush draw, maybe an overpair here. Uh, eight comes out, which is going to possibly complete some straights. Helen jams, hardy kills out of there. And uh, both of them fold. Helen takes it down. Oh, we have seven five offsuit here in the big blind. Yeah, good, uh, you know. It's something, it's something in my game, Zag, playing here on Global that I really need to work on. And I think it's part of the reason why I've struggled here at Global and I've done better on Battle Online. Is because Battle Online, you have the ability to bluff. Uh, we're here, you don't. So I feel like it takes, takes a part of my game out. That I don't really like to take that part of my game out. It's hard for me to concede pots. Um, but it's something I need to do a better job at here. Um, and play a little bit more ABC here at Global. But it is hard for me, you know, because I want to fight for pots. Uh, here we have Ace-8 Offsuit here in the small bind. Uh, the only way we will play this hand is if we have the opportunity to open. Given the player in front of us, normally I would just uh, open this up 2x. Uh, solid player here. I'm actually going to open up 2.25x. So I'm going to make it 675. He does still call it. Uh, interesting spot here. Um, not a great board for us, but we do have middle pair and the overcard. We're going to check call. It is definitely a much better board for him. But we do have middle pair, so we're not folding. We're going to check call. Uh, don't know the bet size, but we do have to call here. He could be just throwing out a flip bet with a lot of different cards. Don't love the 10 coming out, of course. Um, this becomes a check fold now. Um, his bet size almost kind of keeps us in... The thing is, though, like if an ace hits, that's... We're getting good odds to call, though. I think we have to call this. I don't love it, though. And now it becomes an easy fold. I guess the problem was, like, calling that there. We're just hoping it goes check-check on the river. Oh, he got us. So he bluffed three streets. And, uh... We're going to have to write that down. Hard to kill a solid player, so... Not a spot we really love to be in, but we couldn't... But uh, there's no situation, I believe, that we can call there. So the question really became, like, on the turn... Yeah, of course. The question then becomes like, okay, on the turn. Like, can we call there? It, I guess it ends up being a really bad situation. All right, we are agreed with pocket aces, which is great to see. We'd like to see somebody open in front of us that we could just three bet jam. And not have to jam ourselves. And I don't think I'm going to jam this. Um, normally I would at the stack size. Now this is perfect here because now we can just three bet jam our aces. 
And hopefully get a double up here that we need after what just happened with hard to kill. And uh, we don't get it, but that's all right. We don't want to call there, of course. A7 suited. Uh, we'll open this up here if it faults to us. We'll open it up 2x. So hard to kill being on left is not really the most ideal situation, especially when blind versus blind. It was an interesting spot though to calling on that turn because of his bet sizing. He gave us the right odds to call. But I mean this is the guy who is up the last time I checked he's up 19k on global. He's a good player. And he played that hand really, really well. And that's like a spot where just I, I'd love to be able to get better in spots like that. Cause I feel like I just completely fell into his trap there. I really did. I fell into his trap. And he played it really well. I get the right odds to call. But the problem with that hand was the board was paired. And even if an ace comes out... Like, once the board is paired with the tens... I think it maybe does devalue my 8. It's one I'm definitely going to want to look at in Flopzilla. Forget about the fact that he bluffed me. I just want to take a look at that hand. I mean, I think the I think the turn call is definitely the right call. It's just the question is, if I'm planning out my hand, you know, planning out my hand, when I do call that, what's my plan on the river? What you know? What hands can I call with on the river? It's gonna be that's gonna be a good one to study. In fact, you know what? Let me find that hand and make sure I. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna have to look. I, I, I'm recording this anyway, so I can go back and look. All right, blinds are up. We are in a uh, push fold now. Helen here pots it. And that's the other thing too, it makes it so difficult to play out of position. Uh, here we got King 2 off, so we'll fold this one up here. The good news is we just gotta win a jam here, but we, we you know the thing is we wanna hopefully have a good out jamming opportunity soon we don't want our stack to get too short we have two probably blinds right now with number five we don't want our stack to get too short to where where we lose fold equity we start having to jam wider and don't have as much fold equity because the beauty of it now is when you do jam you have the fold equity so you can grab you know the blinds and the antes which you know add up and become very helpful.
Here we go down to big blind. And we have king seven suited. So um, we're going to be defending our big blind here. Although a walk would be great too. See what Sloppy does. Unless Sloppy, of course, jams or something stupid. And we get the walk, which is even better. <laughs> we get the walk. Very happy with the walk. But yeah, we were definitely going to defend there. Uh, Queen 7 offsuit here. Uh, I'm just going to fold. Very good chance if we open it there. Hard to kill is going to jam it. I, like, hard to kill. If he could just like leave this table right now, that'd be great. <laughs> just not a player I want to have on my left. Like it's gonna be one of the worst worst players I have on my left. And there he three bet jams. I mean, it's a five x open by Sloppy. I mean, what can Sloppy open 5x? Was that 5x? Oh, no, I'm sorry. It wasn't 5x. That was 2.5x. Uh, <clears throat> and then hard to kill 3 bad chance, which is correct. I mean, hard to kill as an M of 12, 29 big blind, so you're just going to be 3 bad jamming there or folding. I'm not, I shouldn't, no, you're not going to fold. You're going to call too, but if you are going to 3 bet, you're going to 3 bet jam. And my guess is that Hard to Kill is going to have a lot of 3-bet jams in his uh, big blind range at this uh, at this stage of the tournament. Nine four, of course, we're going to be folding this up here. We get the open up there from J3. Sloppy calls. Hard to Kill calls. And Healer Dad defends. So we got a four-way pot here. Flop is 10-6-5 offsuit. Hard to kill. Decide to check. Let's see what Healer Dad does. We do have a new player at the table, by the way. Uh, we got uh, BC. 24-19. So, Zach, do you like this? Uh, playing the tournament with the commentary? It's like watching on... Uh it's like you're watching on um, on Poker Go or something. I'm broadcasting, I'm playing, and I'm broadcasting. I kind of like it. Helps keep me focused on what's going on at the table too. You know, if I do this, I can just play some more higher stakes tournaments when playing one tournament at a time and just commentating on what I'm doing. That's a that's a way to go. Play higher stakes tournaments, commentate on what I'm doing. Doesn't have to be higher stakes. Let's play one tournament, focus on the table, see what's going on in the table, and talk about it. It actually feels really good. Despite the fact this tournament has not really been going the way I would like it to. And J3 is out. Boy, full house there by Sloppy. Obviously, we don't know what J3 had. But J3 is gone, of course. Uh, here we got 10-7 uh, suited. Uh, we will not be jamming. We could actually jam this, but we're not going to jam the 10 7. Um, it's like right in the cusp of what would be a jamming hand here in the cutoff uh, with uh, an MF5 13 big blinds. But now we don't have to worry about that anyway because Sloppy decides to um, open and then hard to kill three best from the button. So, interesting spot here for Sloppy. Let's see if Sloppy gets sloppy with his newfound chips. He does not. Uh, Ace-4 offsuit here in the hijack. Uh, we'll be folding this up here. We will not be jamming Ace-4 off, Ace offsuit. Now, in push fold, I will have no problem um, isolate jamming Sloppy or Helen. 
if they open limp. But I would be very hesitant to 3-bet jam if... I mean, it looks like Sloppy is opening a lot. But Helen, I would be hesitant to. But Sloppy looks like to be opening a lot now. Uh, 5-6 here, follows up. Get the open limp here from BC. Which will get a red tag, by the way. We don't have enough information on him to make any kind of determinations what kind of player he is. Helen now. Contemplating the ifs. Folds it up. Let's see what Sloppy Bob does here. And uh, big red one. <clears throat> and we got three ways. And we get the uh, bet here from Big Red One on the Queen 4 2 board. Okay, blinds are up. So now we're sitting here with an M of 4. We have eight big blinds. Again, we're in push fold now. But we'll be folding up our Jack 5 lawsuit. See what Sloppy does here. Sloppy opens it up. A little under 2.5x. Big red one calls. And we go multi-way. King, queen, five, two-tone. See if Sloppy throws out the uh, bet here. Thanks, Zag. Yeah, I like it, too. I like it, too. We need to play 45 tournaments at the same time where you can just focus on one and talk about it. So, uh, flop goes check, check, check. Sloppy now throws out a, a little under half pot bet. When the second king comes out, insta call from uh, Big Red. So Sloppy could always have a king here. Uh, maybe he's just throwing out a delayed C bet. I don't know. He does bet again here. Small, bad. Uh, a little under a third pot size. Let's see what Big Red one does here. Big Red one it could have a queen. Tough call. He does have a queen's tough call. Um, I don't know how much Sloppy's going to be bluffing here. But I, I think Sloppy being a weaker player might even be doing this with lower pocket pair type hands. Which would make calling a queen pretty enticing here for Big Red One. Big Red One does call. Big Red One did have a queen. Actually had the same exact hand. Which makes the, the bet interesting with the ace queen. But I, 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 don't, I don't think it's a bad bet at all. Uh, Ace-10 here, we're going to fold this up. It's pretty apparent that nobody has a king, so, you know, you can get value from a 10 there. Uh, so we get the under the gun open here, uh, 2.5x open, and you get the 3-bet jam from BC. A pretty big 3-bet jam, considering the stack sizes. Helen calls, so Helen's all in. See what Sloppy does here. I mean, this is a big bet. Sloppy calls too. Sloppy's got tens, queens, and ace king, and the king comes out on the flop for Helen, and uh, Helen holds on. So Helen holds on. Sloppy gets hit hard. We have ace ten. Uh, so let me just take a look here. Twenty seven. Uh, all right, we're gonna be jamming our ace ten offsuit here. Good luck. With an M of three, Let's see if it gets through. Would like it to get through. Sloppy, you can find the fold button, and he does. So we, 
get through. We get some blinds. It's nice, nice for us. And we have an M4. So yeah, tough break for Sloppy with the tens. I mean, that was kind of rough though. I mean, that was a huge three bet jam considering the stack sizes. I hear we have a three offsuit. We're not going to be defending. Tell him to get some chips back, which is okay. Not the worst thing. I want to see Helen still in this game. Helen jams. And uh, Sloppy calls. Sloppy's got Jack versus Ace 8. And Helen does get the Ace on the flop. And uh, Helen takes it out. And just like that, Sloppy is gone. I mean, Sloppy was looking good, and all of a sudden, Sloppy's out of here. So, tough breaks for Sloppy. Sloppy was probably already thinking about that GOAT trophy. And uh, now he is just, um, he's no good to go. We're going to be jamming here. Jack-10 offsuit. Good luck for us. Hard to kill. And we'll take it down. And here we have 8-5 offsuit here in the button. We'll be folding this one up. Uh, we got Better Man here. Haven't seen him. I don't know what he can. I think he probably just came to the table. He opens up. Uh, about a little bit of a 2x. Better Man. Haven't seen him before. He's kind of an unknown as well. A lot of unknowns playing this afternoon. How you doing, uh, Zag? You still in the tournament? I assume you are. Let's look up Zag. We'll see how Zag is doing. Real time update, see what Zag is up to in here. Nobu Zag, nice job. Zag sitting in 17th place right now. Uh, 77th place with a stack of 20, uh, 25k. So good luck, Zag. Uh, King 3 here with folds up. Get the open limp there from BC. That other guy is gone already. Did he. I, I missed what even happened. I guess he's gone. Yeah, better man is gone. And hard to kill got a lot more chips. Great. Not what we want to see. Um, so this, I missed the pre-flop action on this one here, but we got multi-way pot. Uh, get the bet here from healer, get a raise from big red, BC calls the raise on a low connected board. And ace comes out, so obviously if anybody has like a hand like pocket threes here, they've got their straight, which is possible of course. Um, second five comes out, now you don't expect anybody to have a straight unless big red one was planning on a check raise with the threes. Uh, Big Red does now bet. And uh, we got the raise now from BC when the second five comes out. And a really big raise, too. This puts would put Big Red all in. So Big Red didn't have the threes. Maybe BC had the threes and he was still playing. I don't know what was going on there. Uh, Ace five here. Uh, we will jam this Ace five offsuit. This is close. Um, I'm actually going to fold it. I'm not going to jam the ace-5. It's close. I'm actually going to hold off on jamming this one. And we would have been up against ace-2 and king-queen, and we would have been dead and buried. So I'm kind of glad that we didn't jam. But close like that, I'm going to just fold it up right now. I mean, that was just very close. You can go either way. 10-6, fold this one up.
Yeah, Helen, you know, Helen is just... Helen has Go Trophy, like, on her mind right now. Clearly. Um, Bean takes this down. So Big Red is officially done. Jack 2, we're going to fold this up here. Listen, the longer Helen stays in this game, the better I feel. Because I'm going to have an opportunity to... To get Helen's chips. What I'm hoping for, the scenario I'm hoping for versus Helen, is I have a hand like aces or kings or something like that, and Helen opens and I get the three bad jam. That's my dream. Will it happen? I don't know. But I hope so. Now you're up to 30k. All right, come on, Zag, you got this. I don't know if I'm gonna get there, but I'm gonna. I need some. I gotta. I gotta get some chips somehow. But. I have confidence in you getting your first global trophy today. You got this. All right, uh, six two uh, six two two. We'll fold this up, of course. Blinds are up. So we sit here with an M three, eight big blinds, still fighting. 10-9 is going to be a fold. Hundred gun. Helen there in a the small blind. Versus Bean. Which I didn't look up Bean. And Bean is a winning player. Um, plays really small stakes, but is winning. Here in the big blind here with queen seven. Off suit. And I think we're just gonna fold this up. Got another player here, Kid High. Another yellow. Uh, two six suited here. Um, not gonna jam it. We have King Jack uh, suited. So this is one here that, with M of two, we're just going to be all in here. So good luck, King Jack suited. Even to an open, to a jam, we'll defend. We're just going to be getting our chips in the middle here. Got Helen over here. Let's see what Helen does. Bean will call his jam. Uh, and we'll just rebat jam. Bean's never going to be able to fold, of course. So good luck. King Jack suited. We're up against King Jack offsuit. So um, this is going to just be a um, chop pot. Which is fine because we do make money off of it, which is good. Now we have number three. And here we have ace four. So we will be jamming ace four offsuit if it faults to us. Uh, Helen opens, comes an easy fold. <clears throat> See what Kid High does. Kid High may not be familiar with Helen. Be careful with Helen, she will call those high card hands. Don't bluff Helen. 
See what Helen does here. Monotone board. Helen checks back. So you can feel pretty safe. No flush at this point. Kid throws out the pro bet. And Helen raises, which Nen feels to me as if she was slow playing some kind of flush. Because we haven't seen Helen be super aggressive. So for Helen to do that almost makes it feel like maybe she had a rather strong flush considering Helen only seems to open with bigger hands. Uh, here we have uh, King Six suited, which is uh, going to be a fold for us here. Uh, it's again another borderline jam we can make. But for the borderline ones, I'm just going to fold them up. And uh, looks like uh, Kings will beat three. So. The jam there by Hard to Kill, which um, I never chance to really take a look on why. Yeah, I don't know about that jam. It was interesting, but I mean, Hard to Kill you can't you can't um, you can't question him really with his success he's had thus far. But he definitely plays a tricky style. I'd say to I'd say. But unfortunately for him, his threes ran into kings. Uh, we got Gambler 317 here now at the table as well. Which is an unknown. Ace four here. It's going to be a fold. It was another close one, um, but in that situation, there, I'm just airing on the side of fold when it's really close like that. Let's see, we got Jax versus King Jack, so Jax is going to take it. Versus BC. Uh, 6 2 off 2, we'll fold this up here. King High in the High Jack folds it up. We got BC there in the small blind versus Helen in the big blind. And uh, BC decides to jam. He's got a 38 big blind stack, and he jams right blind versus blind versus another big stack, so. Interesting play. 10 2 off suit, easy play for us here. We just fold it up. Sitting here with number three, six big blinds, still just hanging on. We've been doing, we've been hanging on for the past half hour or so, it seems. Just hanging around, waiting, and uh, hoping to take down a big pot, take down a, a jam. Uh, so you had the limp, and then you had the ISO from Helen. So BC, I'd be concerned if I were you. Helen does throw out now the C bet on a dry. Well, it's actually kind of very connected board, and uh, BC jams here. BC, of course, can have some sets here. Um, could also have a straight, like a hand like uh, Jack Nine is always possible. Suited, unsuited, you know. Suited um, limp call uh, isolation. Um, I think, I mean, this is a tough spot. I think Helen Dan needs to fold it up. Unless you got overs, I guess it's the only way you're going to call there. But it's a very scary board considering the pre flop action. Uh, we got Queen 7 here. Um, we have an M of 2. Get the open limp here from Kid High, which makes things kind of annoying. Uh, to where we're not going to be defending here, so we're going to fold this up. <laughs> well, <laughs> the only way we'll end this stream is if I lose. <laughs> That's all. We don't lose. 
So we need we need your uh, and I, I appreciate the kind words there, Zach. I do appreciate the kind words. Uh, I didn't see what was happening here. Let's see. Oh, it was the limp by Kid High, then Gambler isolated. Now Gambler bets here on this board, which is better for the for the limper limp caller. Um, and Gambler bets Kid High raises. <laughs> Nick Schulman. <Schillen. laughs> nice. All right, we are uh, we are on our deathbed here. Eight four suited again. It just sucks having hard to kill because hard to kill is going to defend properly. Now we eight four suited is like definitely handed. We would need to jam here too, which kind of sucks. Oh god, I hate folding there, but I just because hard to kill is going to defend properly. He's going to defend really really wide. Um. It just sucks. It really sucks. All right, here we got uh, King Six offsuit. We will be jamming this here if it folds to us. I really hate folding that uh, folding that eight four. Now we gotta fold this. I really hate folding that eight four suited. But like, if we had a different player to our left, I would do it, no problem. But hard to kill to our left just really sucks. And it's really kind of put us in a tough spot. Um, now blinds are up too. We're, we're really... We got four big blinds left. Ten six off. Actually, these are not in jam. Believe it or not. Now at this point, I mean, we just really need that double up. Uh, we get the open here from Helen. Ooh, again, if Helen's opening, you know, it's going to be a better hand. Now, Wash Cap can, can call here. Obviously, 3 red jam is possible. Right, so, we'll see. Wash Cap is thinking about what to do, how to play this hand the best way. And Wash Cap does decide to call. Uh, kind of a dry board here. King 9 6, Rainbow. Of course, we know Helen is going to open with bigger hands. So, we could see Seabet here um, if Helen has a king. Uh, Helen pot size bets, of course, but that's really the only kind of bet I seems Helen really knows. And then we get the jam here, and obviously there's no folding. Uh, King ten versus ace three, so um, Helen does get a little bit frisky there with the ace three suited jamming. And uh, watch cap, very happy to see. And that's why you call there too, um, as opposed to three bet jamming. And I like to the call there uh, by watch cap with that particular hand. Um, hard to kill. Opens up here. Obviously, our queen two suited was a fold. And uh, Gambler does call from the big one. And uh, it seems like a great board for a C bet here for hard to kill. Uh, hard to kill does check back though and does not take the uh, C betting opportunity. And half pop bet comes in the hard to kill fold. Interesting. Um, that hard to kill did not at least uh, see bet there on that board. It's a good board to see bet on. Uh, here we have 97 suited. And uh, this is going to be a jam if it folds to us. So good luck, 97 suited. And hard to kill limp. I mean, Helen limps. It just makes it an annoying situation. Um. Because we're never getting folds here. I mean, I know we're mostly not getting folds anyway. All right, let's just jam it here. I mean, it's annoying, but we really don't have time to, we have to jam here in this spot. And it's fine. I mean, nine, seven, we have a lot of possibilities, straight possibilities. Obviously, flush possibilities. Um, so, it's not the worst hand to have here. Would it like 9-8 suited better? Sure. Um, 
get the all in here from Cap. Again, we know what we're trying to get here. We're trying to get a flush or a straight. We're up against Ace Queen. He does hit the Queen. Um, we do still have outs. We can get an eight. We get this thing. We don't, and we are done. So it was just this tournament really was a struggle. Um, really, it came down to the hand where um, we got called off by Ace High. That particular hand was really the hand that kind of just set us up for failure in this tournament. Um, so I don't hate the way I think we played the tournament fine. It's just again one of these things on global poker where you know where we need to be more uh, conscious of our bluffs and not bluffing these weaker players and getting and extracting value from them. Now we didn't have many great spots at all in this tournament i'm not going to say we were card dead but we just didn't have many great spots we didn't have many value spots at all in this tournament and when it came time for shoving uh were we a little timid on some of our shoving spots i i, I think i'm fine with i think i'm fine with it i mean could i have opened i don't like really opening when i have an m six or less m five or less so I think you know I'm okay with I'm okay with that. I just think it came down to the fact that we never really had any good value spots in this tournament. We had no good spots to ever get value from anything. We never really had any hands, and I don't even remember if we didn't have a spot where we were above a 10k stack in this tournament. And you know this tournament we were in this tournament for almost two hours, and for the most part it was pretty uneventful. So. Um, Anyway, so this was kind of like a welcome back to me in a way, you know, for me in a way here on Twitch. That being said, this was my last tournament I'm going to be able to play for quite a while. Um, now, I, as I mentioned before, I would like to stream a little bit more often um, when I'm playing cash or when I'm playing sit and goes. And I do like this kind of format here, just talking about the table and helping me um, zone in on the table dynamics. So maybe if it means I can play a little bit higher stakes, whatever the case may be, that's fine. Um, I think I think this works. But in terms of tournaments now, this is the last tournament I could play until... I mean, let me look at my calendar right now. I can tell you that tomorrow it's not happening. Because I got to pack tomorrow, plus I got things I'm doing tomorrow. Then I'm on vacation in Lake Harmony, Pennsylvania um, until the 10th. I come back on the 11th. So the 11th is possibly a day I could play. So we'll have to see if the schedule looks like an 11th. So the 11th, I might be able to play some goat on the 11th. Actually, it depends. It depends. Although I might be going to see my daughter uh, in Taming of the Shrew that day. So I don't think the 11th is going to really happen. And then I have... Um, I'm doing a show called, I guess I mentioned, Musical the Musical. And I have the Tech Week that week. So I have rehearsal Monday through um, Thursday. So... Um, and then I have shows until that following Monday. And then I'm getting involved in another show. So I don't know when I have rehearsal. So, well, the 19th I'm not going to play because the 19th is my wife's, is my wife's birthday. And I have a doc's appointment on the 20th. And so maybe the 21st if I don't have anything going on that day. If not, maybe the 25th. I don't know. But we'll see. It's gonna. So we're not going to have a lot of time to play tournaments. But that's okay because in September, uh, September I should be hopefully be good to go. And uh, yeah, I'll be back streaming on a more uh, normal basis. I don't know how consistent, but normal. Whatever it is. I'm never going to have a schedule. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you coming hanging out. As always, Zag, good luck in the tournament the rest of the way. I hope you take it down, win that GOAT trophy. Um, I am going to sign out now. Uh, but uh, until next time, you know, I'm going to post this up on YouTube as well, actually. So um, if you're not following me on YouTube, I haven't posted a YouTube video in a while. I'm going to post this one up on YouTube tomorrow. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to follow me on YouTube yet, please do youtube.com slash PokerDad. Uh, if you're not following me on Twitter, at PokerDad2878. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can you can come and follow me on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash PokerDad. So anyway, 
Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, Poker Dad, out.